Oh hey, what's going on? This is the Agassino Zynga Show, brought to you by me, the host, Agassino Zynga. And this is episode number 220. Hope you guys are doing well, hope you're well hydrated, well rested, whatever. It's quite late at night now, wherever I am here, somewhere in the depths of East London. I've actually debated making the, this video, what, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 times. And now I'm finally here. I'm finally here. Finally decided to make it. So, um, in case you're wondering, um, yes, th those eyes do not belie you. They are red and bloodshot because I've been up doing many other things that aren't recording podcasts and wasting time and shit. But hey ho, you gotta get around to it when you get around to it. Um, it's been an interesting start of the week already, right? New occupation started the other day. Um, new surroundings, new people to meet, new commuting journey to go through, new lunch options, new uh, figuring out what time to get back home knew uh what time i should start in order to get back home a particular time you know all these new things that come and come about right figuring out where the bin is figuring out um where they keep all the cutlery and shit because you know there's the kitchen in this new office i'm working in now is like you know it's amazing it's super minimal it's just like everything's everything's hidden everything's sort of like you know hidden behind some sort of clean design lines you know that i'm sure some of my tutors at such a mind would be really proud of um, all flush so you have to kind of really be aware of where your surroundings are yeah and they're having to pour a million drawers to find spoons and to find you know washing machine i mean um dishwashers and shit and recycling bins oh the recycling bin was a bit of a faux pas i think i put a banana peel in the wrong compartment but you know yolo you got a little on the wild side a little bit um yeah interesting place to be but yeah so far so good in a good little zone at the moment i think i'm feeling great i've been training a bunch as you can tell from the flipping youtube video i look fucking jacked here don't i right i look jacked i can tell myself from the mirror look at that jack 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 if you want to listen to the audio you have no idea what i'm talking about but hey that's part of the beauty of a podcast um i'm feeling good man training a lot doing a lot of fasting um 16 hours a day for the most part now i've got more my second day today i gonna have a break on wednesday because i'm gonna meet a friend up for a couple of drinks and then get back on it again Thursday, Friday. And yeah, feeling good, man. Training a bunch. Um, eating well. Um, and just generally, generally keeping my eye on the prize. I think I mentioned it the other day to somebody. I haven't mentioned it on here, but my motto for 2019, for the rest of 2019, is to mind my own business. I think, as most people, you know, I'm a human as well. I don't pretend, you know, as much as I pretend to be otherworldly, I am also a human. And I also got caught in a trap of following news and following what's happening with this person that person and politics here and socioeconomic stuff here and that 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 and industry news it just gets a bit too you know crazy and you end up just kind of um losing yourself a little bit and just following the news or sometimes you end up being like i think i mentioned it before and here before i mentioned on here before 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 but there's a problem that supposedly i remember reading i'm not sure if it's been com um, substantiated or whatever but it's supposedly london marathon have a big issue <clears throat> with people not turning up to races so that's a really big problem that they have so um the reason why it happens is because supposedly they send out a little graphic to your email address right that tells you oh you've been selected for the london marathon you kind of beat all these people who are also on a wait list it's very oversubscribed and you're a lucky few to get a place right so if I, well, even me saying that, I get happy. Right? I'm like, oh, wow, it's amazing. What a great opportunity. So what it essentially happens is that those same people don't turn up at the race because they feel as if they've got, they've already won or they've, they've taken part in the race because they've got a little JPEG that they're going to share on their social media channels or their friends are going to be liking the comment, liking the post, especially somebody's first race, right? Especially somebody that hasn't been used to running previously. All their friends know they don't run that much, blah, 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 blah. It goes, it just spirals into... I think like people don't really shop because they've already done the job. So I think sometimes with me, especially when it comes to industry news and that sort of malarkey, because I'm so plugged in and so aware of stuff, you sometimes can fool yourself into believing that because you're aware of what's going on, you're doing something yourself. It's a very weird way to think about things, but I think for people out there that are procrastinators like me or, or who were former procrastinators or who are going through procrastination periods or who have got... Um, a creative block which doesn't really exist really for the most part right you just got to work through that shit right you just got to keep on creating keep on making stuff but whoever does suffer for those things you know that sometimes being aware being plugged in knowing all the gossip following all the podcasts following all the news articles seeing who posted what on their social who didn't post that 
it can sometimes fool you to thinking you're actually participating, but you're not. You're commentating like everyone else. So, um, for my 2019 resolution, keep my eye on the prize, focus on what I'm doing, and just ignore everything else. Literally ignore it. And it's been so far, so good. Um, so good that on Friday, Saturday, no Friday, Friday of next week, Saturday of this week, Saturday of next week, and then the sat and then the Friday of the following week, back to back weekends, I'm be DJing at the Star, at the Leighton Star, at the Heathcote Star, and the Star of Bethnal. And this has all come about only because of keeping my eye on the prize, right? If I was distracted, partying, doing nonsense, or just generally just wasting my time thinking about people that aren't thinking about me, I don't think opportunities come my way. I don't think so. So, again, it can be hard nowadays. I think, you know, with Love Island finished, right? You Love Island people, that show's over now. You've got now got time to pull away and stop caring about people, random people's lives and stuff, which you probably won't anyway. But if you can pull away, concentrate on what you want to do, man. The end of the year is already approaching. We're fast approaching August. We're going to be into month eight already of the year. We just, you know, what I mean, we just cracked over the half of the year with July. Now we're fast approaching. You know, from now on, it's going to kick on. In a couple of weeks, it'll be bank holiday. Then it'll be carnival. And then all of a sudden, it's September, and the year is already coming to a close. So don't waste your time looking or analyzing people that again are not really interested about yourself and just focus on what you're doing today that's what i would do anyway if i was you but again you know you're free to do whatever you want listen to however you want you want to take it but anyway let's jump into some topics because we don't have much time to go so let's see what we can talk about here loads of news has happened over the past few weeks i've kind of missed out on talking to you guys about so let's just get right on into it right on into it what have we got here number one we'll say here oh um undefeated to for 2019 collection um pretty basic for the most part i've seen this on hypebeast i just plugged it into my list i don't know why i put it on there but hey let's just speak about it anyway um undefeated again um you know storied brand you don't have to speak too much about it if you're a love of street where you would know undefeated history and what they've done, you know, from James Bond, Chris Gibbs had a slight involvement in it. I forgot who designed the logo. It's a really good story about the logo, isn't it? I think the logo is Aaron Bondaroff, right? That's the logo. I think um, the story goes that James Bond from Undefeated had the New York thing logo, or the New York thing, the name, and Aaron Bondaroff had Undefeated, and they did a little swap. So they traded um, brand names, and then that's basically essentially the start of the brand. And since then, Undefeated has kind of gone into establish itself you know as one of the kind of you know uh, mainstays in that sort of like west coast streetwear scene um they've kind of gone from strength to strength and they've kind of slightly slowly but surely silently did their thing um i think for the most part most sneakerheads really look forward to their nike collaborations they do a really good job on those but it looks like in the last few seasons they're really trying to step up their apparel collections or clothing in general um this is a collection for their fall winter 2019 collection these air force ones actually forget Let's just talk about the clothes one minute. But these Air Force Ones, I've seen them. I've seen them the other day. Are really cool. I'm not sure what they are. If they're special, but there's a pair. They're essentially all white, black swoosh with gum sole. There's a, oh, there's another pair with a red swoosh as well. Red heel tab and a gum sole look amazing. But anyway, let's get back to the clothes. The clothes look really cool. Anyway, so let's give them the shine that they deserve. You have this great tracksuit here. Again, I think it's weird because again i'm not a fan of some of the other stuff like you know i wouldn't wear palace to save my life right that's i think something that a kid should wear nowadays or if you're trying to be, pretend you're from a working class background that's probably your thing but if i was going to wear that kind of like track suity sort of clothing you know streetwear style thing that people do with loafers and shit if i had to wear that sort of stuff when i was a kid now patter um undefeated grind london they do some cool shit too those will be my kind of mainstays i'd even go to stuff like um polar i'd even go to a yard sale right there's a few other skateboard brands you look at as well do good stuff um what else was the other one based in canada shit but you can't really buy some of that stuff so there's a lot of brands out there you probably go with that aren't as hype as all the others i mentioned as you know there's the one beginning with the p so you, they'll be probably easier to get hold of and again it's a bit different to mix up because i think for those younger kids out there who like that kind of stuff who are into this sort of clothing i think undefeated is probably a good way to go, go about things and obviously it's doozy they're obviously stepping up not stepping, but they're offering a lot of like entry level items too for people it's not all just like you know um cut and sew sort of jackets and stuff they've got loads of track suits 
those nice hoodies and those nice polos that I've seen a lot of kids wear nowadays too. So I'm assuming that's a way of kind of like, you know, um, bringing them more of a younger clientele, younger customers for the most part. But yeah, this tracksuit looks really cool in the first slide. I think the, the sort of like navy with a red stripe um, in the middle with two yellow bands on either side reminds me a little bit of Gucci, I'd say in that regard. But again, um, a good a good tracksuit nonetheless. Don't want to I hate doing the pictures like this. Actually, let's take this off. Um, you've got this nice little floral hoodie that reminds me of old school LA, right? That kind of all over print hoodie that was really nice as well. You've got this amazing UNA t shirt there too that looks really cool. Make sure everything's on there. Is it working well? Do it again. Boom. Should be there. Boom. Yeah, UNA hoodie's looking really cool too. Um, again, nice half zip track. Oh, that half zip tracksuit is banging. So, half zip navy tracksuit. With a blue band in the middle, it looks amazing again. Just quintessential streetwear items, nice stripy tops, um, long sleeve shirts, nice green combats there, really nice fit, not too baggy, quite slim, nice sweatpants, great hoodie. Again, just amazing staples that you can wear season in, season, season in, season out. Oh, your quintessential coach jacket, has that got a zip on it or is that just lined? I think it might just be a lined zip, of course, for four. That could be quite cool. Not really a fan of the tie dye, sort of like long sleeve hoodie thing not really a fan of that but again i can see why someone would like it the coach jacket is my standout those gray more gray sweatpants with the undefeated logo is an absolute win um love this top here as well on the side on the right hand side it's all black um zip on a hood undefeated on the left hand panel again just really nice branding not too not too crazy not plus all over the place but just really nicely done um not 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 a lot of tonal branding, which I know makes sense, probably appealing to younger customers, so that's okay. Um again those grey sweats are probably the win, I think, out of everything here and the and that flipping coach jacket. This t shirt is amazing, undefeated is life, the rest is just DL, that's also me. Come I think it's just obviously a player on the board is life sort of phrase, which I'm not too sure where that comes from, but again I'd imagine sort of that phrase is from. Again the quintessential streetwear outfit you have here, long sleeve t shirt, shorts white soft white trainers are these what trends are these maybe is that river club is that undefeated clubber i'm not too sure but again classic streetwear bits from undefeated that you can't go wrong on um again big fan of it for 2019 um loads of pop no, nothing's all gray nothing's gray and white loads of colors involved as well um it looks like it's probably one manufacturer too i'd assume you know coming from that lineage they're not gonna you're not gonna want to have a retail store anywhere near supreme those guys were not producing high quality streetwear garments and for the most part the manufacturers the manufact it seems as if the manufacturing uh, potential or capabilities of guys on the west coast is really high so i'm assuming the stuff will be well made as well so definitely check it out um out on stores august 2nd undefeated for winter 2019 collection Beep, beep, ba, ba, ba. What's next here? Let's move on. Oh, this is really cool. But you know what? Maybe I'll save that for another day. Let's put this up on there. Let's move this here and let's put that there. What else is here? This is a, a note I put here on the future of club culture. Well, club culture future. Oh, um. This is actually a good little interview, but again, I think I'll save this for another episode because I need to be dive, dive on deep on this. But this was a show. This was an episode um, from Resident Advisor. Um, it's a video you can watch on YouTube now called Resident Advisor Exchange 466. It's their Resident Advisor Exchange podcast that they do where they kind of gather industry so industry people from like not the electronic scene and nightlife economy or well, nightlife scene, electronic scene, DJs, artists, managers, whatever it may be. And they basically shoot the shit, talk shop about what's going on in the industry. This talk was really good. It took place during IMS, the IB for Music seminar thing that they do. That's really amazing. Um, some of my favorite, one of my favorite Dixon interviews that never saw a live day um, came about during this session, I think last year. And generally has really good interviews. I had a really good interview with um, Luciana. Um, if you know Luciana, is a kind of you know, a very legendary um, techno tech house DJ from back in the day who was extremely popular a few years ago. Um, maybe in the same sort of vein as like a Marco Corolla has a very particular sort of kind of group who like him but then it seems as if the last few years he kind of fell by the wayside if we see him too much and after he kind of divulged that he essentially was suffering um, or he's going through a bout of alcoholism you know drug addiction and stuff whatever it may be so he got himself cleaned up 
and he kind of sat down with IMS and really spoke quite openly about the perils of you know drug culture within the electronic music scene so that's the kind of vibe you get right those are really honest conversations and i guess because they're in a room full of other industry peers they feel comfortable they know there's a lot of kids watching like me who are kind of aspiring to get to their level so they're very forthright in kind of showing you what the real is about so that you can have a good idea of what the industry is about so cut long story short this this discussion talks about the future of club culture how the clubs in london and some parts of europe are struggling to kind of keep afloat and what they're doing to try and cultivate a scene how they're trying to introduce more people to the club it's a very very cool interview very loads of interesting energies going around in terms of different frictions between you know very avant-garde type style burlesque circusy type clubs i think that she's this lady there based in america who had a very interesting perspective on how she curates her nights then there were the guys from fabric talking about how they try and curate the lineups and how they try and make sure people um they're offering their partners a very very a very very lineup but it's very difficult considering how much the djs charge and then on the side of print works there's like anyway a really good interview that they spoke about but again stuff that i want to really expound on and really get to dive on deep in i don't want to kind of skirt over the top of it and now probably isn't the time but i'll definitely leave a link on the show notes you guys can check out and kind of watch it yourself but it's a very very cool interview and again something i'm a big fan of and i think Ari did a really good job of kind of balancing um the kind of the pro the for and against kind of like where club culture is going now right because if you listen to some of the older heads they're a bit you know um cynical about things because they've been through so many cycles right they can just they, they, can, they can just spot the trends and then you've got the young hopeful kids who are coming into all doughy eyed and it's kind of a good friction that they kind of speak on so again i'll link it to the show notes you can check out yourself see if you think there's any use of it or there's, there's some nuggets you can take away from it but tomorrow's show i'm definitely going to expand on it a bit better and kind of like draw out some points i thought were uh of m- much importance to what we're kind of going through currently in the nightlife scene so um we'll jump ahead we'll jump from that and we'll head straight into oof, nike air max 95s yeah baby so um i've not mentioned it on here before but i'm a big fan of nike air maxes right big fan of it hey air max day hate the artificial um um the artificial scarcity in the market that nike and adidas and all these other brands have perpetuated which lead to crazy cues, which lead to people getting injured or sometimes killed or maimed, whatever, well, not killed, but, you know, severely wounded or severely hurt, egos depleted, bank accounts robbed, parents fucking disowned, whatever it may be, because these brands are trying to artificially create this sense of scarcity in the market, which doesn't really need to exist in it, right? So with that said nike air max's collection is online is probably one of the best right that they have in their collection they don't do a good job of making new shoes they have a good because you know i think if you if you had a catalog like nike you probably wouldn't want to make any new shoes either right you just want to retro whatever you have but they do quite a piss poor job of doing it right they don't really retro the colors that we actually want a sneakerhead they tend to retro colors that are just you know of the moment they don't really stay end up still on the shelf for a long time carrying dust and don't really have any real sell on or sell on value later since the you know after the kind of release windows kind of pass by and i'm not sure what they do with their shoes and, and environmentally wise i don't know what they do with them anyway but anyway less said about it the better they're making amends or trying to change things and so far i've seen some good stuff um case in point these absolute beauties right so this is a a retro of a code.jp um air max right that came out a few years ago it's a bit of a flip because i think i remember the sole being gray but these are insane insane so this is a nike air max 95 marine day pack right essentially it's an all white upper or a white midsole with a pink bubble on the back clear bubbles on the front right and navy blue and white stripes up and down it like it's a thing of absolute beauty the absolute shoot and again it just goes to show just how simple colorways right taking a kind of a hint from the archive a hint from stuff they've done in the past reinterpreting it into a new mold is going to sell better than it would do anywhere else because the thing about nike which is i think on most brands the odd thing i guess sneakerheads are such a we're such a passionate bunch sneakerheads right we buy stuff by the hundreds by the thousands right we sell it out we spread the word through forums through instagram through whatever it may be right or facebook we're we're good at kind of garnering attention for shoes so the sneaker brands get really tempted to kind of buy to kind of directly talk to us all the time right but i sometimes think 
sneakerheads like me exist also, right? Who aren't as plugged in or sitting on social all the time, who just kind of want to go past a shop or pop around or browse an online store and just stumble across some amazing shoes that I'm then going to tell my friends about who also like to stumble upon amazing shoes and then we'll end up buying all of them, right? It's like the same could be said for the Tom Sachs, right? Nike didn't need to make a big campaign about these for me, right? I was going to buy them regardless. And I think for the most part, sneakers that actually like shoes bought these shoes and that's who basically sold these out, not sneakers that resell stuff. So shoes like this, like this Air Max 95 here that I've got on the screen, this white, blue, Obacinda Beauty, right, is a good example of how that how that stuff can actually work, right? So pink bubble on the bottom, all white upper, it's just an absolute thing of beauty. And then you've got the other color, which is a flip, which is white and red with a neon it's just like you can't get any better than you know these shoes are now they're supposed to be meant to be on the heels of windbreaker jones returns late situation when they come into here initially thought to be a one of the mx 90 no particular theme nike japan took to a sneakers platform to officially unveil the marine pack which comes of two shoes it's going to be out when should be out the 9th of july so it should be out already now to buy but look how simple it is to do a shoe like this get it right and just put it out to customers what like I would buy two I would buy two each of each colorway, right? White and navy, and you've got this red and white. It's just an absolute thing of beauty. And again, I just hope someone from Nike can actually understand that, you know, as much as the sneakerheads need to be catered to, there also needs to be an, an, an acknowledgement that there are people like myself who don't mind buying shoes when they're available, who would actually naturally buy two pairs of one shoe just because they want to make sure they have it for a long time. And again, like this is just a thing of beauty. It would appeal to a sneakhead like myself. I'm sure an older gentleman or someone that doesn't really care about shoes but just wants to look, you know, great on a weekend would lovely would love to buy a shoe like this. This is, this is just absolutely gorgeous. Like you can't go wrong with a shoe like this. The Air Max ninety five, a classic design, an absolutely startling colorway that again I think would sell really, really well once out and available. Um again, not just sure when they're gonna come out. Um or if they're they, I think this is out already, right? Now for July. Look at them. Look how nice they are. Look how beautiful they are. Um, so 9th of July, they're meant to be coming out. Hopefully, we see them out very soon. Let me see if actually if I can find them, if they're actually available here. They're meant to be 160, 160 though, US dollars actually to buy. Oof, that's a lot of money, isn't it? Okay, they're only available on the sneakers app in Japan. So they're not even available anywhere else apart from that, which is a bit of a shame. Let's see if I can scroll down and find them. There's an undercover day breaks that are super popular, right? Everyone's all over them. Let's get this up on the screen so you guys can see this as well, actually. Um, yep, yeah, there you go. All right, you see that? Cool. Undercover there. Boom, 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 boom. Got, you got the cool Grey Jordan 4s that are due to come out. What do you guys think about these Para Dunks? They're a bit disappointing, aren't they? Para is an amazing artist and has done some great work with nike especially off the back of some of the pat stuff but the these dunks are really really underwhelming aren't they don't you think so the cool gray fours are going to go pretty well i think they'll sell quite well because i think for people like myself that just want to wear gray shoes with like cool jeans and shit we'll probably end up buying quite a few of them but the cool gray fours are a fucking diamond shoe i can't wish, wish they would bring out the all white the pure monies and the black cats again for they were so good but yeah pair of dunks i'm not really a big fan of um, again, let's see if we can find these MX95. Oh, we've got the great MX95, great reverse. Remember those? Oof, oof. These neon yellows are nice as well. Mystic Green. Oh, what are they? Mama Mia, there's some good stuff on this Jap Japan launcher site. Marine Day Pack, and you got the Marine Day Pack there, right? So let's see if we've got the launches, if we can find them. Let's see if we can find these shoes, right? Um, on the Nike website the uk1 gb gb launches site because it's always really difficult to find these things on the nike uk site it tends to always push them on the fucking japanese one which makes sense again if, you, if you're a real sneakerhead you know the color of jp shoes are always the best so um that could be a thing that we have to kind of get used to um again so what we've got here we've got jordan fours mm, we've got fours we've got undercovers there We've got these Tinker Jordan 3s, which are god awful. Wish they would burn those. We've got Viotech Air Max 90s, which I'm a big fan of. They look fucking beautiful. I didn't know they were coming out. So that completely, aren't they? Wow. These are beautiful. Viotech 95s. Shit. They're nice. Um, let's go back again and see what's available here. 
this is probably the most boring podcast in the world but hey this is what you have to do here i want to see if these flipping marine day pack 95s are available or not are they available are you available yes or no come on come on nope it looks like they're not unfortunately so there you go if you want to buy them you have to go to japan or get them proxied over to you see that's what i mean that's the problem a nice pair of max 95s for once right they come out and then you have to proxy them to yourself it's like ugh, absolutely bullshit but hey what can you do moving on in euphoria has been renewed for season two have you guys watched that at the moment um euphoria is a really good show you know what i saw something the other day it reminds me a lot of uh, skins if you're familiar with the, if you live in the uk or in europe you've known of a program called skins that came out back in the day okay a few a couple a decade or so ago maybe two decades ago and it essentially was a coming of age tv series about these kids in school who kind of essentially went through you know their coming of age story you know drugs drinking sex all that stuff and again it was a very good show because it was a great way for kids like myself to have a real good educational understanding of drug culture of you know um, sexual health whatever it may be relationships friendships it was a good thing maybe not for my generation maybe the generation just underneath me i think probably were the ones that kind of got a lot from it but again a really really good show it's kind of very cult following a lot loads of the people that are on were on the show are, are still quite famous today i forgot the brunette's name that was a kind of main leader everyone used to fancy she's still really popular the other oh, i forgot the names of the characters but it's a very popular show so euphoria the show on hbo reminds me a lot of skins um I've watched the I watched the first five episodes and I'm, I was enthralled by it. I'm gonna let it run out a little bit so I can actually just binge watch the whole thing again. But again, expertly shot. This girl Zendaya is one of the best, if not one of the best actresses of her generation out at the moment. She's incredibly good in this. Like so, you know, someone's so good. I think someone mentioned it before. I think maybe I was watching Breaking Bad and I hated that Pete character in Breaking Bad. I remember someone mentioning, like, if someone hates you on a TV show, you're doing a good job, right? You've really smashed it. If someone does, dislikes your character, it means that you've really um, personified the character, you brought them to life. And Zendaya does a really good job of playing this essentially um, drug addict, right? Strung out, um, manipulative, um, untrustworthy just degenerate right she does a really good job of kind of portraying that um, image out there and it's amazing the story kind of centers around her but there's lots of different characters in the entire story and there's places where it could get corny where it could kind of stray into make um how to get away with murder field or it could kind of stray into gossip girl field but it always reigns it back in on again expert writing but they've done a good job of kind of like pulling in the horses when it gets a bit too pastiche and a little bit too bubblegummy and really giving us the raw and again like i said it's an amazing tv series um so much so that it's now been renewed for season two which is on here on you on high beast i'm not surprised to be honest because again like i said easily one of the best shows out at the moment there's not much competition out there anyway because you know not all the good shows are on a hiatus, a hiatus at the moment or kind of coming back soon like you know westworld game of thrones finished and ended on damn squib so it was a good time for euphoria to come along and just kind of you know sweep up um the viewers eyes at the moment and i guess it's a good sort of add-on to grunish if you like grunish and all that sort of stuff i'm not i haven't, I haven't watched grunish but if you like grunish it's probably a good little add-on because it's a more serious version of grownish right it kind of gives you the real instead of kind of the cookie cutter version of stuff that's going on and again like i mentioned a really quality series um renewed again for season two loads of characters i think got here an image of here from Z as a two from zendaya too detailing how happy she was for the series to get renewed i'll read out the tweet here it says literally just got the call can't say thank you enough for the support we've seen wow and now you know and again another one another person that's acting on the show sydney sweeney i'm specious yes Jacob L. Rody, thank you for all you guys who have watched it and supported it. Euphoria, incredible, grateful. Let's go season two. So again, happy for everyone that's there taking part in the show. And again, I really recommend you guys check it out if you haven't watched it already. Euphoria on HBO. It's available, you know, wherever you kind of stream your flipping TV programs anyway, you should be able to find it. One of the best shows out at the moment. I highly recommend you check it out. Highly recommend you check it out anyway that's half an hour i think that might be a good place to end it i don't want to stay up too late I've got to wake up early in the morning and go for a massive run again this is the excellent english show episode number two two zero a bit of a short one this time around but again i'm going to come back around tomorrow with a longer 
one hour full of news and information podcasts i usually do right loads of nice stuff will be spoken about and we'll go on from there um before that if you're watching on youtube for the first time click that subscribe button if you're listening on a you on an itunes or podcast app for the first time leave me a five-star review helps the show spread and get in the right places where i'm a lucky any questions or comments leave it down below um link to my email be in the podcast app if you want to check that out um i'm djing like i said this saturday next saturday and the next no friday saturday anyway you can find the, the list of my dj gigs on my website xnozinga.com for slash dj gigs or xnozinga.com the deals are in my show description you can check out all my listings where i'm playing should be all there nice and updated um and yeah thank god it's not christmas but again uh, thanks for checking me out this is number 220 i'll be seeing you guys again tomorrow for an episode another episode of the show until then take care peace and bye bye still here bye <laughs>